Hey, Richard Murbach here with the Tom George Yacht Group. We are on the 34 Edgewater Center console today. Uh, going to uh, show you how to get to Three Rooker Island from Clearwater Pass. Uh, so we just went under the bridge here uh, at Clearwater Pass and we are motoring through the no wake zone right now. Um, it's going to be about another uh, two, three minute motor up here until you see the uh, green marker on your left up here that that one's going to have the uh, go ahead and power up um, no longer a no wake sign and then once you get to channel marker 20 uh, that's going to be your signal to then go ahead and take a left and head north to where you'll see the uh, Clearwater bridge um, you'll go under that bridge there and we'll meet you there all right so we just passed under the uh, Clearwater bridge there we're motoring north, um, gonna come up here and you're gonna pass the Seminole boat ramp up on your right hand side. Uh, TGYG uses that a lot, uh, bringing boats in and out of the water. It's nice and convenient for us up at Marker One Marina, which is up there in Dunedin, uh, our next stop uh, right there at the Dunedin Causeway. See you there. So now that we've made it over here near Dunedin Causeway, which is right in front of me, um, we're going to head under the bridge here, uh, and not, not too long of a no wake zone here, just, you know, a couple hundred yards, no wake, and then you can get up and power again. Uh, and once we get there, we're going to head probably about a mile or, or a mile and a half, um, north here, and then we'll stop and tell you what channel marker to look for to where then you can make that west left-hand turn to Three Roker Island, and we'll show you around that a little bit. But... Here we can pan out, show you the bridge. Don't forget about Marco One Marina, uh, which is behind us. Um, right down the channel there to the left, you can get in, take, take a left into Marco One Marina there, which is where we have uh, one of our offices, got lifts, boats there uh, that you guys can demo, including this 34 Edgewater. So we'll see you there. So we've made it here to Red Marker 30. Um, we are just uh, east of Three Rooker Island here behind me. So this is a great point for you to have in your map when you're coming from Clearwater Pass. After you go, you get over the to the John Eden Bridge there. Um, it ended up being about a mile and a half uh, from Don Eden Bridge. So keep that in mind. Red marker 30. Uh, and you always remember red is going to be on the inland side. A lot of people know red right returning, but uh, as you're coming up and down the intercoastal here that we have uh, on the west coast of Florida, um, the red marker is always going to be on the side that is inland, so in this case, east. Um, so we're going to jaunt over to uh, Three Roker Island, show you guys that a little bit, and show you how to throw the stern anchor in. Okay, so we're here uh, at Three Roker Island. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to go through the whole process here of uh, setting your stern anchor up. So. Right now I got nothing out, um, so we're going to want to go to the back of the boat and prep our stern anchor. Uh, so this 34 Edgewater has a nice little feature here in the back where we have our own isolated stern anchor area. So we'll grab this out here. Pretty simple, just your regular fortress anchor. You don't need a whole lot for a stern anchor at the island. Um, you don't want the anchor to be too small and you do want a little bit of chain, but this uh, coated chain is nice so it doesn't beat up your boat. Untie this here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna prep everything so we can then run back here, to throw the anchor in the water once we have our bow anchor out. So I'm gonna set this in the corner Put this guy down here. And just go ahead and tie off my line. Here on the side, just go ahead and tie it off now. Give yourself plenty of road. You can always adjust it, uh, but you want to have it tied off to the boat once you're ready to go and have it prepped, ready to roll. So we got that tied off there. Not to get confused. Make sure you don't stub your toe on that. So now we're gonna come up here to the helm. I got an area picked out 
So I'm going to put the boat in gear. I had the engines trimmed up already a little bit. Uh, that's the nice part about the outboards when you're pulling up to the island. You can trim them up all the way pretty much um, beneath the bottom of the hole. So um, you want to have those trimmed, those trimmed way up just so they're skimming the surface and still have control. So we'll end up swinging the bow of the boat around here. And I got control here at the bow. Uh, it is nice to do this with two people, <coughs> uh, but for our purposes here, uh, we'll just try and knock it out with, uh, with just me. Got my bottom machine on here, so I always know what the depth is. It's coming up right now, six feet. We're here on the south end uh, on one of the points. Uh, the nice part about some of the, the points here is you do get nice and deep water the way you can back the boat all the way up um, and be close to shore the disadvantage is when you got a lot of current it makes it a little bit more difficult luckily we're kind of at a slack tide here today so i'm gonna spin the boat around now i got my bow facing the way i want it i already unclipped the anchor up in the bow so we're going to go ahead and release it this boat has a windlass. Um, if you don't got the windlass, just throw, chuck the anchor overboard. Uh, that's more of a two-person job, or just chuck it overboard and put the boat in reverse. So we get a little road out, and now we're gonna put it in reverse and back up towards the island. Probably gonna need a little bit more road out. May have been a little far from the island to start, but that's no problem. And just kind of peek and see what our anchor road is looking like. Okay, we're tight up there in the bow. See, I felt it. I just felt it come tight, and you can hear the road catch. So now I gotta take my mic off. So I'm probably going swimming. All right, so I put the transition to the back of the boat. Um, we're gonna just toss the anchor overboard. I'm gonna jump in and then just pull it towards the uh, water there. So I got my anchor rope here now. Sorry for the noise. And we're just gonna pull it back towards the shore. Okay, we're back on board here. Uh, as I was pulling the anchor there, um, I swam it back into shore a little bit there, just pulling the anchor with my hands, pulling the boat tight. Uh, sometimes when you're doing that, uh, you may have to have the man on the boat uh, let a little bit of anchor line out in the bow in order to be able to pull you close enough to shore. I like to be in about two, three, uh, three foot of water or so, so you can get up and stand, uh, but not so shallow that you're worried about your engines. Uh, that's one thing is you always want to err on the side of caution. Uh, you never know what your neighbor's doing, but you can control yourself. So um, give yourself plenty of room out here when you're anchoring. Um, and be respectful for the guy the next to, next to you. But um, as you can see, there's plenty of people out here today and everybody's got a spot. Um, as we got settled, I opened up the uh, dive door here and set the dive ladder in uh, on this 34 edge water. That's got a nice place to store over in the gunnel, so it's really easy. Um, and that's just the, the nice and easy way to get in and out of the boat a little easier than some of the, the uh, transom ladders. Um, so as we leave here, we got our anchor line uh, out here in the back that's nice and tight right now, keeping us tight from swinging into uh, the guy next to us. Um, but we'll pull this anchor line up here first, have the engines on. Uh, once we get this anchor line up in the back, uh, we'll go ahead and start pulling the anchor um, <clears throat> out to a little deeper water with the windlass on this boat uh, or just by hand when you have it up on the bow there. So uh, we're gonna hang out here for a little bit and um, then go for a ride home.